My name is Christopher Honey, Chris. Uh, I'm a professor of neurosurgery at the University of British Columbia. So I introduced deep brain stimulation to British Columbia, the province in Canada where I worked back in, in the late 1990s, 1999. And since then I've been the only person doing DBS for five million people. So I got a lot of practice. And uh, we have over 500 patients, primarily Parkinson's patients, but also dystonia uh, and patients with tremor. And deep brain stimulation is a technique where a platinum electrode is implanted in the brain, connected to a pacemaker, usually in the chest, and we can use the pacemaker to modulate the area of the brain where the electrode is. So if that part of the brain has an abnormal rhythm and it's triggering Parkinsonian symptoms, we can block that and improve the Parkinson's. Similarly with tremor, if there's an abnormal rhythm causing tremor of the hand, we can block that tremor so that the patient has no tremor and can now feed themselves. And we've recently used it uh, in a prospective trial sponsored by you and your society, the National Spasmodic Dysphonia Association, uh, to test if deep brain stimulation can ameliorate spasmodic dysphonia. So that idea came about because of a collaboration between a laryngologist with a lifetime experience of spasmodic dysphonia patients and a neurosurgeon with a lifetime experience of deep brain stimulation. And when Murray Morrison and I met, um, we talked about the possibility of DBS helping other symptoms other than Parkinson's. There are at least 150,000 patients around the world who've had DBS for Parkinson's. It's, a, it's routine, and for me it's just another Tuesday. Every Tuesday I'm, I'm doing a Parkinson's patient. But Murray introduced me to the disease or the concept of spasmodic dysphonia. And when I look back in our huge database of over 500 patients, we've actually operated on people with spasmodic dysphonia who happen to also have tremor. We operated on them for their tremor, their tremor went away, but we never even thought to ask them about how did their spasmodic dysphonia improve. So, uh, because I, I didn't know what SD was. And so when Murray um, asked me, we went back in, in our database and lo and behold, two of our patients who happened to have tremor and SD said, yeah, the, the SD got better. I thought that was part of the deal. And I said, I, I didn't even know you had a problem with your voice. That's how you know naive I was. And then, we found another patient came to our clinic with uh, both conditions, tremor, and we asked um, her if going forward we could videotape her voice, record her voice before the surgery, and then when the stimulator was on and when the stimulator was off. The patients can't tell when the they can't feel anything. It's obvious if their tremor stops, but we asked this patient to sit without moving her arms and just um, speak and then we recorded her voice with the DBS on and the DBS off and then sent those recordings to our speech language pathologist who said, oh my goodness, you know, it, this really works. And so that patient was really the inspiration for the prospective study where we are, we are operating on patients who just have SD, not SD and tremor, but just SD. And we did six patients uh, neurosurgically implanting deep brain stimulation and then testing them in a blinded fashion so they don't know whether there's, their stimulator is on or not to try and remove the idea uh, um, that you know they, they desperately want to get better. The so-called placebo effect. They don't know whether the stimulator is on or off and so we treated them for three months with the stimulator like either on or off recorded their voice, stimulated, and then treated them for another three months um, with the other uh, setting, either on, off, or, or then off and on. And then we were able to take those recordings and analyze them. Um, that study is ongoing. Uh, it's too early to talk about it. I, I hope to talk about it um, at your um, National Spasmodic Dysphonia Association meeting in Boston um, next year. Um, a few of the patients have come through the study there are patients still in the study, so anecdotally, uh, the patients who have concluded the, the study really like the, the, the DBS, and their, their recordings seem obviously improved uh, by the DBS. But we want to make sure that the surgery is safe. We've operated on six people. There have been no complications. And we want to make sure that it's a robust therapy, that, that not just one person gets better, but, but everybody gets better.
So we're looking forward to completing that study in 2019 and then presenting the results to you and, and the world. In the future, uh, we think it's gonna be a standard therapy and we would like the opportunity to provide your patients with another choice. If your spasmodic dysphonia gets better with speech language therapy, please don't have brain surgery. Just go with that. If you don't mind the roller coaster effects of Botox, stick with Botox. If you can't get benefit from Botox or you're tired of that kind of therapy, it will be another option for you. And what will be important is that we'll be able to present you with the benefits and the risks so that you can make an educated um, decision on your own to decide is that therapy. So um, we don't think it will, deep brain stimulation will take over therapy for spasmodic dysphonia. We think it will just be another tool that your doctors can use if you are a good candidate for, for that kind of surgery. Here is an opportunity where we have the ability to put an, a platinum electrode into the brain that is not working well, turn it on and have the brain work well. Those are fundamental issues about how the brain works in SD. So we're initially coming at it as clinicians because we want to help patients. But while we are helping patients, we are gaining new insights into exactly how the brain works or malfunctions in SD, which is particularly exciting for a, a neuroscientist. Yeah. The knowledge that we gain from that might feed back into better drugs, better therapy, some other kind of therapy that you would never have thought of because you just didn't know the, the function or malfunction of SD, and now we're going to be able to tease that apart. I just want to say uh, thank you to the National Spasmodic Dysphonia Association for sponsoring our work. And I'd also like to say thank you um, to, the, to my patients who are extraordinarily brave and uh, wonderfully honest uh, with their evaluation of our, of our techniques. We're, we're doing it for them.